Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to paint this awesome 28mm scale Stug 3 from Rubicon Models which I built a while ago. Here's a link to watch that video. As you can see it has already been primed with Vallejo Black Surface Primer and Blue Tax to a plastic shot glass. The Schertzen has been stuck to popsicle sticks to be painted separately and attached later. I would normally use all Vallejo paints, but this time I decided to try these Italary paints that I impulse bought from a local hobby shop quite some time ago and then promptly never used. There are six colours in this box set, so not really enough to paint the entire model, but I was interested to see how the basic camouflage colours would look. I start with the Dunkelgelb. This paint is quite thick and needed a fair bit of thinning to be sprayable through my airbrush. I started by spraying the Schertzen. Don't forget to do both sides. I almost did. Then onto the hull. Being a yellow colour, this can take a few coats to get a decent solid layer over the black primer. It would be easier with white or grey primer, but I don't have any of those on hand, so I just apply coats until I have a fairly solid yellow stug. I quite like this paint, it sprays very nicely when appropriately thinned. It seems to be about the same quality as Vallejo paint. I like the colour too, it's a little bit brighter than the middle stone I would normally use for Dunkelgelb, but it looks quite good. The next step I did was to highlight the Dunkelgelb a little bit. The white included with the Italary paints is a gloss, and so I wasn't sure if that would make it look weird or anything. Probably not, but I prefer to lighten colours with creamier paint anyway. I used Vallejo model colour Buff. The mix was approximately two parts Buff to three parts Dunkelgelb. I sprayed it all along the edges of the vehicle and along the upper edges of the Schertzen. It's subtle and probably won't be so noticeable under the camo colours, but I like it. Next, I sprayed the Italary Flat Panzer Olive Grün. It took me a while to decide on the camo pattern for this Stug, but I eventually settled for alternating green and brown lines on an angle across the vehicle. I have no idea if this pattern has a special name, but it looks interesting to me. I was careful to avoid spraying the spare road wheels, but I did add some to the in-use road wheels. To ensure the lines on the shirts and were consistent with the hull, I held it up to the model and used the airbrush to mark where the line should begin. I then sprayed lines at an angle to match the lines on the hull. It's not likely to be perfectly lined up, but I don't think that really matters. Don't forget the tops and insides of the shirts and I didn't really like this shade of green. It's a lot brighter than I was expecting and to be honest I was tempted to stop here, strip the model and start over again. But I decided to continue on figuring that I'd be able to make it look better with washes and weathering. Also I dropped the tank on its roof while painting the green and broke the gun and shield off. I suggest avoiding that if possible. Next I sprayed lines of the flat pants of Shocker Braun between the green lines ensuring there was still plenty of Dunkelgelb between them. Again avoiding the spare wheel. Contrary to the green I really like this colour and will probably use it on future German tanks instead of the Vallejo chocolate brown that I usually use. Again I added some to random wheels. The Scherzen is done the same way as with the green. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Next, I applied a wash of Army Painter Soft Tone, mixed two parts soft tone to three parts water. It was my hope that this would improve the green as well as giving the entire model a slightly dirty look. I apply this fairly roughly, but try to avoid letting too much of the wash pool on the model. I add some to the road wheels and slather some in amongst the suspension gear, though it probably won't be visible back there when the side skirts are glued on. Now for decals. I applied gloss varnish before this step and then soaked the chosen decals in Humbrol decal fix before applying them with the aid of tweezers and a brush. I haven't applied them to represent any specific vehicle, I just went with what looks interesting to me. These are the decals that Rubicon included with this Stug kit, which I think are really nice. Unfortunately, they only include the emblem for the Africa Corps, which I didn't really want to use. So, I used one of the 15mm scale Viking Division emblems from Plastic Soldier Company. The decal fix should help the decals to settle into the gaps on the model, but I use this small brush to help press them into the recess. You could do the same with a knife blade if you're very careful. Once the decals have set, I like to weather them with a little bit of some undiluted secret weapon concrete wash, mostly applied to the black and red areas of the decals. It makes them look a tiny bit faded. Next, I add some dirt by applying Army Painter Soft Tone to the white portion of the decals. This is a pretty simple step, but I think it adds a lot and helps to blend the decal into the rest of the vehicle. Once the washes were dry, I added another coat of gloss varnish over the decals to protect them. Then I begin the weathering process by adding chips. For this I use some spongy foam like you might find in a model package. I dab on a mixture of about 30% model colour mahogany and 70% black grey. I try to focus this mostly on edges and corners of the tank and around hatches where the paint would be rubbed off most just through general use. The important things to remember with this technique are to remove most of the paint from the sponge and to ensure you use an up and down motion and avoid dragging the sponge across the surface. I then add additional chips to areas the sponge couldn't reach with a very fine tipped brush using the same paint mixture. I also paint the tops of the diamond plate pattern because I would imagine the crew would walk on that a lot and the paint would be quite worn there. Next I paint the tracks. I used Vallejo Model Air German Grey for this, which is very close to the black grey that I usually use. This is a pretty straightforward step, 
Just put the paint on the tracks. I start with a large brush for the outer tracks and move down to a smaller brush for the inner tracks. I haven't painted the tracks all the way across the top because that area will be hidden by the side skirts. I hit the tops of the road wheels and finally I use a fine brush to paint the rubber of the road wheels being careful not to get the grey onto the wheels themselves. Don't forget to use the grey on the spare track links if you've included them on your Stug and the tyres of the spare road wheels. I also painted the antennas grey. Next I applied a wash of army painted dark tone to the tracks. This was mixed about 3 parts dark tone and 2 parts water. I liberally apply it to the tracks and try to avoid getting it on the wheels. I also apply it to the spare track links. This here is the result of me being easily amused. This is a very friendly vehicle now known as the Hug Stug. When the wash is dry, I then give the tracks a dry brushing with Vallejo model colour black grey. I like to test on my hand whether or not I have removed enough paint from the brush when doing dry brushing. I follow this with a lighter dry brushing of model colour London grey along the edges of the road wheels and the tracks. I tried not to go overboard with this. I also hit the spare road wheels and the antennas. Next I add some rust to the tracks. For this I made a very diluted mix using standard rust pigments from MIG and their pigment fixer. I try applying it only between the raised parts of the tracks. I want this effect to be rather subtle. I also apply some along the inside of the tracks, just enough that it mostly settles in the gaps there. I try to avoid the tyres on the road wheels. I think in future I will try some different products for this effect. Now to paint some of the details on the tank. I start by painting the MG34 black. I used the Vallejo black surface primer that I primed the model with in the first place. I like it better than the regular black. Don't forget to paint the underside of the gun. Next I paint the tools using Vallejo model colour black grey, which I really should have done at the time I was painting the tracks. Sometimes things get forgotten when you're a spaz like me. While I have the black grey out, I dry brush the machine gun on its upper surfaces. Then the handles for the tools get a coat of Vallejo model colour beige brown. Carefully try to get the paint all the way around the handle. There aren't really a lot of tools on this model so it's pretty quick and easy. Next I add Vallejo model colour mahogany to the butt of the MG34. Model colour light orange is then added to the exhaust pipes to represent that rusty colour exhaust pipes usually have. I forgot to film it but at this stage I decided to add some Vallejo metallic gun to the tips of the drive sprocket teeth. Next I made a 50-50 mix of army paint of strong tone and water and applied it to the tool handles. And then the machine gun butt. I also put some in the holes on the drive sprocket and around the teeth. Next I add plain dark tone to the exhaust pipes the butt of the MG34 and the inner part of the spare road wheels. I then watered it down to about a 50-50 mix and added it to the metal parts of the tools. After this dried I applied a coat of gloss varnish to the entire model in preparation for the next step, which is to make an oil wash using cheap artist oils and thinner. I apply it along most of the gaps and joints on the model in order to create depth and add a kind of grimy dirty feel. The capillary action of the alcohol based thinner helps the mix to flow into the gaps. I added quite a bit of this in the space around the gun, figuring that would be quite a dirty area. I put it in all the corners of the model, some more messy than others. The sides here are going to look rather grimy. I applied a lot of it on the engine deck as well. I also put it around the edges of the wheel rims and in the holes. If you need to correct any mistakes or clean up any areas you can use a cotton swab with thinner to wipe the black away. Now I finally get to glue the shirts and onto the hull. It was really worth it to leave them off until this point though. Nearly done. Time for some final weathering. I spray the model very lightly with Vallejo Model Air Mud Brown, mostly to the lower areas of the tank. I use this lid to protect the gun from unwanted overspray. Then I did the same thing with Model Air Burned Umber. The final colour was Model Air Light Brown. I was going for a lightly dusty look which I think I've achieved. Then while I was priming other models I lightly sprayed some black primer around the exhaust pipes. I think I went a little bit heavy with this. Finally, after a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte, I take a 2B pencil and rub it along the raised part of the tracks. This gives a nice little sheen of freshly scraped metal without the need to use metallic paints. And that's it. The model is finally complete. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Despite my initial dissatisfaction with the Italeri Green, I think the green turned out pretty good in the end. I have to say I like the Italeri paint and while I won't be replacing my Vallejo paints, I'll probably pick up a couple more of the box sets in the future. I think I got just about the right level of weathering and dusty appearance without going over the top. I'm not a big fan of tanks just covered in mud, which seems to be the most common way to depict a well used tank, but this still looks like it's been out in the field getting dirty and seeing hard use. It probably has a skilled crew that knows how to avoid mud. Yes, that's my excuse for not having muddy tanks and I'm sticking to it. My colour selections are obviously not the be all end all of German colour scheme accuracy and I encourage people to use whatever colours they like the look of, but for those interested I'll place a list of the paints I used in the description below. I really like this tank and now I need to put together some German infantry to go with it before I can consider playing a game of bolt action with it, so I'd better get my arse into gear I suppose. I hope this video has been helpful or interesting to you. As always, comments are welcome below. 
don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching. Farewell.